God's Word is your answer. Do you find yourself just full of anxiety sometimes? We live in a world right now that can just bombard you, bombard your mind, your heart. I mean, just all the things. Don't have enough money. How am I going to make it? I'm 50 years old, and what happened to my life? I just went through a divorce. Anxiety, pressure, worry, fear. What do you think about this? Do you ever feel like you're just going to break? I mean, just, I'm not going to make it. You know, the real battlefield that we face is in our mind. And the reality is your spirit is strong. Think about this. If you're born again, then your spirit man has been redeemed problem that we battle is in our mind. And that is the real place that I want to take you in God's Word today. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25, anxiety in a man's heart weighs it down, but an encouraging word makes it glad. So I have a question for you. Are you worried? Are you facing anxiety? This is just you and me right now. Stressed out? feel alone, confused. The mind is the seat of all spiritual and carnal conflict. And it's critical to understand how this works and what God's Word has to say because your success largely depends on the ability to renew your mind. We're commanded that in Romans chapter 12, to not be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that word renewing means renovation. And when you go to renovate something, you've got to take out what's there before you start putting in. Before you start laying down the carpet or the wood or the planks or the drywall, you got to strip everything down. You see, that's the real challenge because we have about 60,000 thoughts a day and apparently 90% of those are negative. And so we have these thought constellations that just constantly are producing the same results. But I believe that God has caused you to hear this today, for you and I to have this intimate time together, for you and I to really talk because I know what it is to have low self-esteem, to think I'm worthless, to be down on myself, to think the world's after me, to be paranoia or what all the things that I struggled with as a young girl. And then I know what it is, not overnight, but to be born again and then get in God's Word and have my mind truly renewed to have a completely different life than the one that I started in. And God's not a respecter for persons. I want to help you with the power of your thoughts. Because this battle, this constant conflict in Romans chapter 7 says, because the mind of the sinful flesh will set its desires against the mind of the spirit. So what's happening is the mind is the battlefield where the mind of our flesh is enmity with God and sets itself against the mind of the Spirit. So here's the reality. In essence, what controls our mind controls our life. So my dear friend, what's controlling your mind? It's just you and I right now. What are you thinking about? What's habitually popping up in you? Maybe you aren't even conscious about it, but it's so buried deep in that you just feel like off. Something's not right. You get that pit in your stomach a lot. Do you have too much acid reflux? I mean, think about these things are trying to say, signal, signal, something's off. This is not the peace that God wants you to live in. See, the Bible teaches that anxiety brings a heaviness to a person's life. Are you heavy? You just feel weighted down? Anxiety is a state of uneasiness. You're always like, you just don't, you can't relax. It's a place of worry. It's an abnormal fear that lacks a specific cause. And the Bible says in Proverbs 15, 15, all the days of the desponding and afflicted are made evil by anxious thoughts and forebodings. But he who has a glad heart has a continual feast, regardless of circumstances. See, your faith in the Word of God is fighting against your central perception of that situation, which you see, what you hear, to always bring you revelation. Now, let me me explain that. As you read the Word, faith cometh by hearing. As you get in God's Word, as you hear the Word, that's why it's so important that you and I stay connected. That's why it's so vital 
that, that we continually equip, encourage each other with the word. It's why it's so vital. You know what I did for years and years and years? And I still do it. Every single day of my life, I listen to the word. I read the word. I listen to two to three sermons, many of my own. Other people are encouraging word. I'm always hearing why, because faith cometh by hearing. But for years, I played the word of God just on continual play. It's always getting it in me because I knew that faith was produced by hearing the word. And when that word gets inside of me, it begins to bring revelation, an extraordinary unveiling, a removing of the blinders. If not, I'm just being led by what the world is telling me, what the systems are telling me, what people are telling me. And I'm, you're just like, you know, you're one of those lemmings just going off the cliff with everybody else. You're too good for that. God paid too much of a price for you to do that. See, this is why the battle or the struggle occurs in the mind. So the, the word mind in the Hebrew is nefesh. One writer wrote it like this. The mind is the only part of man who's made in Yahweh's God's image or Yahweh himself or the emotion, the character, the attitude, the spirit, the control, the reasoning, the creativity by design or plan and where the intent of the heart takes place. These are all evidences of the condition of the spirit, whether holy or not, that reside in our mind. Think about this. If so, so in your mind is your life. Now stop and think what I'm saying, because we act like victims, but we're truly creators. We're made in the image of God. You're not a victim to anything. Oh, Paula, you don't know who my parents were. You don't know how my husband is. You don't know what happened to me, the abuse. You don't know what I suffer with. Really? So, so that negates, you're the exception to God's word. Because if you don't like your life, you have to change your mind. If you've, if you've been born again, your spirit is changed. It's not like you're born again, born again, born again, born again. Your spirit's changed. So in your mind is your life. In your mind is your soul. Your mind, your will, your emotions. In your mind is your appetite, what you desire. In your mind is your person, you. You become the product and the sum total of your thoughts. Now that might be a hard truth to digest and to even hear. Boy, I wanted to still play that victim or think, man, it's because this is going on or I can't control that or that's happening. But the reality, I am the product of the way I think and I'm gonna show it to you in the Word. You know how we always quote out, as a man think it, so is he, but it really, really means, it's a, a very unique word that says, as a man thinketh, so is he at last. So whatever you think, you always become or you always were. See, the Hebrew word of nefesh, mind, is to breathe or refresh oneself. Now let's look at this according to God's word. Like, how do, I, how do I get this right mind? How do I get out of the anxiety and into the place of peace and goodness and blessing? Because you can quote it all day and not live it. And my dear friend, that's not what I want for you. It's not what I want for me. Life is short. James says it's like a vapor. And if you're the one I'm really talking to right now that I believe with all my heart and all my being and all my spirit that I'm sitting here, that I've prayed, I've prepared for you. Because you're saying, Paula, I won't change. I don't want to just keep going on this, this gerbil wheel, on this cycle, getting the same things. It's Groundhog Day every single day. Let me help you. In Genesis 2-7, Nefesh, remember? says, the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. That breath means wind, divine inspiration, intellect, soul. In other words, your, or the soul, the nefesh of a man, is connected to the breath, the nefesh of God, housed in flesh, formed from dust. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's what separates you from the animal kingdom. It's what separates you from every other creation. 
because as soon, this is the amazing love that God had for us. And this is why we are created in God's image. It's what separates us from angels, demons, which are fallen angels. So it separates us from every creation, every creature. As soon as you become a living soul, your spirit and mind are connected to God. So what happened? Well, you know, because of the fall of man, what happened was sin entered into the world and sin means to miss the mark. So what happens? We get disconnected. We miss the mark. And because we have the power to choose, we have that will. We find ourselves engaged in this battle, a daily battle, deciding between literal life and death, carnal mind or spiritual mind. You know, one of the hardest things is to take responsibility and recognize that we are the self-sabotagers of our own life. That ultimately we really do manifest. I'm not be, being spiritually spooky. I'm being very word-based. Bring forth all that we think. I'm speaking to the believer right here. I'm not talking to what's called a natural man that's not born again. I want to zone in right now because there's three types of people. Natural, which means you've had no encounter with God. You've made no decision, which if that's you, remember life is all about choices. Right now, why would you live without God? Are, are, you, are you just that stubborn or rebellious or to think like I can just do it on my own? It's the fad, it's the cancel culture. I mean, if you just intelligently think, if you're wrong and there is eternal life, you're paying quite a price not to say yes to God. If you say, hey God, I'm not sure about you and God can handle your honesty and your truth. It's not like he wants you to go, hey, let me fake this with you, God. I love you. I receive you just as is. Say, God, I'm not even sure about you, but I want to try you. Just show yourself to me. That little tiny, 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 tiny seed of faith of just, God, please. Not, thus saith the Lord, I receive Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior, and I'm going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Just a tiny little seed of faith is all it takes. And God comes rushing. He's standing there at the door knocking right now. Just say, come in, God, privately. It's just us. Then there's a carnal man. A carnal man's born again. You're born again because you just ask God, I love you, I want you. Yeah, I got born again in a trailer. You don't have to be at a church. You don't have to be at the Jordan River. God's right here, right now, waiting for you. Then there's a spiritual man, which is where we all want to get to because that spiritual man is where your mind is connected and controlled by the Holy Spirit. That's where we live our best life. Because our life is where our thoughts make us. I want you to think about that because my perception, how I process thoughts, how I see things, how I look at things, determines my conception. So hold on. What I have the ability to conceive is based on what I have the ability to perceive. So if I perceive I am who God says I am versus what my mother said, and if you don't know that story, when I was five years old, my father committed suicide. And my mom, understandably, now looking back, I can't imagine some of the demons and battles that she went through. She started drinking. <clears throat> and I have a brother that was my, is my half-brother. And my brother was quite cute, and I was quite ugly as a kid. And my mom said, we, no one was saved. Nobody went to church she was drunk one day and she goes, she's holding my brother and she goes, God, I walked by, it's probably getting on her nerves. Why'd you give me such a beautiful little boy and such an ugly little girl? Now those words at that time in my moment, in my life, penetrated me deep. And it would take years and years. I mean, I could, I became kind of cute, but I thought I was the ugliest thing in the world. I'm not talking about exterior ugly. I'm talking about ugly from the inside, where you just don't like yourself. I struggled. And so I, I just kept saying to myself, watch this, this is important. Because I kept getting into God's word and one day God said, I want you to thank me 
for every part of your body. And I started going, God, I went from, I thank you for this beautiful hair. And I'd always thought I had stringy little hair. I thank you for these. I thought I had squinty little brown eyes. They were actually hazel. These beautiful little squinty brown eyes. And it took me two years. But I kept confessing. I put scripture with it. And I kept confessing God's word over myself until eventually, I can't tell you when, I can't tell you where, I can't say, oh, on this date, this happened. But I remember recalling, I got up and I looked in the mirror and I didn't hate myself. I was okay with myself. I don't know where it flipped over. I don't know where I went from that carnal mind of the words that have been spoken over me to that spiritual mind that I saw myself the way God saw me. But I can tell you that's where confidence started. That's where esteem started. That's where peace started. It happens that way. You see, my spiritual mind not only includes the conception or creation of an idea, but it will eventually cause you to act according to what's being produced in your spirit. Think about this. So what I perceive, how I think, determines what I conceive, which causes me to act. So all actions come out of perception. So how do you see a thing? How do you see God's Word? For everyone else or for you? How do you see? See, I literally believed. And, and I kept saying, Paula, this is God speaking to you. I have literally tens, twenties. I mean, a lot of Bibles marked up. I just mark it out and put my name in there. It's important to write in the Bible. So right here, I'm Jeremiah 46, the Word of the Lord, which came to Jeremiah. I cross it out. I'd write, Paula. Just like that. And I'd look at it. Now I know literally how to study this, but I was taking this saying, God, what is this saying to me? What are you speaking to me? And I started with the book of Psalms. And I just wrote my name everywhere, everywhere. God, how do you say this to me? Because what I perceive, then I conceive, and then I act on it. Now this doesn't change overnight. But, but the more this gets in my spirit, here's the difference when I tell you live a prophetic life. You see, if you live according to the kingdom of God, a life of the prophetic versus a life based on the world system, the world system is everything's out in the atmosphere, media, radio, conversations, people that comes out, comes into your ears, your eyes, it comes into your mind, then goes down to your spirit. When you live a prophetic life, it's coming out of your spirit then it's going to your mind, and then you're putting it in the atmosphere. It's the exact opposite. So it's in here, you're saying things. That's why it's like we call those things that are not as though those, they were. It's not just random. It's like I'm going, I am the healed. When I went through this recent battle with my health over Ramsey Hunt, I mean, every day I was like, I am the restored of the Lord. I'm the healed, I'm a perfect creation of God. I sat in that hospital for seven days and I literally, read God's word to myself, no TV, no anything. I was just like, this is what God says. This is what God says. This is what, but it's what I do all the time. And every time I get away from that, I know exactly what to do. And it's not that I don't have days that I'm being bombarded with what other people say or the lies that have been spoken about me or my goodness, have I ever been the, the center of the, the rumor mill in 38 years of, of ministry. And sometimes it would get to me and it's not like, but I realized it was trying to pull me or distract me. What would I have to do? Shut it out and go back down. You know, and sometimes I'd have to encourage myself and say, Jesus made himself of no reputation. Smith Wigglesworth didn't do any, read any newspaper because you're human and, and we're in this world. But what I'm trying to tell you is that if you really want to live this life that is abundant, this life that you can live out the life that you want because you are creating it, then it comes from your spirit. You've got to get in this word. Let's keep on talking about this. If you want more joy in your life, do whatever you're doing with more joy. How? Just do it. How do you behave when you're joyful? Behave that way. How do you think when you're joyful? Think that way. How do you feel when you're joyful? Feel that way. The joy or the glad heart brings a cycle of joy, which produces more joy. Just start laughing right now. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha. 
crazy. You guys will take and make some crazy meme out of that one. Look, start laughing. Go put the Three Stooges on. Little Rascals. I don't know, something that makes you laugh. Sanford and Son, whatever floats your boat. Do something that produces joy if you want more joy. If you just sit around and dwell on the negative and think how bad life is, how's that going to bring joy in your life? How's that working for you? See, you don't have to do anything different or special. Do the ordinary, like make your bed, driving your car, but do it with joy. These are the most wonderful sheets I've ever had. Now, doesn't that sound stupid? You gotta make the bed anyway. Might as well make it with joy. You're gonna think anyway. Might as well think thoughts that are good, virtuous, praiseworthy, Philippians 4, all these things that make you produce, act on those things. See, the same goes with love, happiness, compassion, or stress, worry, anxiety. Jesus said in John 14, 1, do not let your hearts be troubled, distressed, agitated. Now, our heart is the way we feel about something, the way we think about something. That's what the Hebrew means, leb. I like this. Let's give the Amplified. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed. Now think about that and let's take that literal for a minute. What's agitating you? What's disturbing you? Who's allowing it? Ultimately, we are. We're the gatekeepers of our life. Proverbs chapter 4. Guard your heart the way you think about something, the way you feel about something. For out of it flow the issues of life. So stop allowing yourself to be agitated and disturbed. And do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. John 14, 27. You see, what we find from God's Word is we can control the way we respond to something that might trouble us. You can't control people. You cannot control life. It's going to rain on the just and the unjust, but you and you alone get to control your response. You can choose peace or trouble. You can choose to stay calm or to calm down if you start becoming agitated. Jesus said, in this world, you're going to have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration. But be of good cheer, for I've overcome the world. So, so what are you focusing on? John 16, 33, are you focusing on, I have tribulation, I have trials, I have trouble, I have distress, I have frustration. Are you focusing on, so the, the key is the shifter there is be of good cheer. Are you focusing on Jesus overcame the world? which makes me an overcomer of the world. As I said, here it is in conclusion, warning. Big red flashlight right now. You think about 60,000 thoughts a day. Most of them are so habitual, you don't even consciously think about them. It's up to you to make sure that you don't use 59,999 of them with negative cynical thinking. I want to pray for you. If you want to change your life, you've got to change your mind. Why don't you just write me? Why don't you go to the website? Go to paulawhite.org right now. Call that toll-free number. The brain's an amazing thing. It has a hundred billion cells. And each one of those little babies is connected to at least 20,000 other cells. So anytime you have these different combinations to choose from, why not choose a different combo today? Let's pray. Father, I'm praying for my dear friend. I pray that this would get so deep within them that truly it would be a life-changing, altering time that we've spent together. That they would shift right now. Let every demonic stronghold over them, let every demonic arrow that's been shot at their mind, let every generational curse, let every strong man that is holding them, let every spirit of Python, let every spirit of Abaddon, Bahamut, that is coming against their mind, trying to hold them in captivity, be released off them right now in the name of Jesus. And I pray that the Word of God would wash your soul, and by the washing of your soul, your life would be cleansed. What do you mean? 
from that old way into God's way. Let's do this together. I've written a brand new book, The Power of Thoughts. I pray you get your copy because I pour out. And it is one of those life-changing books that I believe will completely transform you. I've enjoyed our time together. Make sure that you send me your prayer request. Make sure we stay connected. Let's keep doing this. Follow me on social media. Make sure you download the Paula White Ministry app. And why don't you think about sending in an offering? This is good, good ground. We're making a difference preaching in 190 nations. Give to this ministry. It's fruitful. It's the right thing to do. I love you. I'll see you next time. Be blessed. A thought is like a seed that is planted into our souls. As we continue to think similar thoughts repeatedly, they take root. The mind is the seed of all spiritual and carnal conflict. That's why the mind is the battlefield. There is power in your thoughts because what controls your mind controls your life. But if you change your way of thinking and you have an encouraging word and a glad heart, even though your situation might not change immediately, then you're going to feast regardless of your circumstance. This book will help you understand why you think what you think. It will help you identify the destructive patterns of thoughts so that you can change them. Call toll-free, write, text, or go online right now. And for your ministry gift of $20, we will send to you Paula's incredible new book, a step-by-step -step guide walking you through topics like the spiritual mind, no more masks, breaking the mold, revelation thinking, once holding you back, what do we really think, and much, much more. For your ministry gift of $30 or more, in addition to the brand new book, we will rush to you the new companion two-disc series on audio CD, The Power of Your Thoughts, as well. Call, write, text to give, or go online right now. Master your mind, and you master your life. Thank you, Paula White Ministries Covenant Partners, for transforming lives, healing hearts, and winning souls every day around the world. Because of you, we have helped millions of people in need with food, clothing, emergency relief, and the gospel and love of Jesus Christ. From our emergency disaster relief response in other countries, from hurricanes and earthquakes, to our packing and providing over 2 million meals to war refugees overseas, providing much needed food and emergency relief to families with children in need. Paula White Ministries is good ground, and you are helping Paula be the hands of Christ extended with missions and outreaches worldwide. May God bless you. The preceding program has been made possible through the faithful prayers and generous support of our partners and friends in this viewing area.